If you've ever used an AI before and after filter, this video is for you. Why am I talking about AI when it comes to before and afters? Because one of the big questions I get from patients often is whether or not I use AI mockups to determine what a patient's after will look like once they've had their desired plastic surgery. My answer though is typically no, because I don't like to use these technologies, at least not just yet, because they are not completely there. And what do I mean by that? Ultimately, when you look at these filters and these softwares that change your aesthetic in order to mock up a potential result that might come from plastic surgery, one thing you'll notice, especially that I notice as an expert in plastic surgery results, is that they're not not always 100% there. They're not taking into account things like prolonged swelling, scar tissue formation, uneven healing, and potential complications that can result from any surgery. So the reason I don't like to use them is because it gives patients unrealistic expectations. And I'm not saying that I necessarily will make you look worse than what the AI is doing, but it might be slightly different. And when you're having surgery on your face or any part of your body, what's really important is that I'm setting the right expectations for you because if I don't and then you get fixated on the result that the AI gave you, and even if your actual result is better than what the AI gave, you're gonna have that result baked into your mind and that's eventually going to damage the trust between you and I, and it's going to make you potentially chase something that is not possible to actually achieve with any form of surgery, and even begin chasing things such as perfection, which is ultimately impossible. So that is why I don't use these AI filters. I do still like doing some mock-ups using Photoshop for people and for myself for surgical planning, but ultimately that's my reasoning and that's just how I do things.